Hello everyone, welcome to the 5 minute tech channel. Today we will be talking about TPL which is Task Parallel Library. Task Parallel Library is a set of public types and APIs in system threading, system dot threading and system threading dot task namespace uh, which is provided by Microsoft. Uh, TPL is basically used for simplifying the process of adding parallelism and concurrency to our applications. TPL uh, does is handles the partici partitioning of work, the scheduling of thread on the thread pool. Now TPL APIs deal with concepts that are specific to multi-threading programming where we use multiple threads to execute a series of ex uh, functions. TPL introduces an abstraction called a task that can be used for anything that uh, the application needs to wait for. Uh, the need to perform some complex uh, CPU utilization intensive uh, operations on separate thread or if we need to download something from a remote network or we have a local input output operation such as saving file to disk or aggregate multiple uh, disparate tasks some involving threads and other not and wait for them all as if they were in a single task so all these tasks can be done um, through TPL in parallel asynchronously. Now moving on, we'll just have a quick demo of the task parallel lab. So this is a simple representation of a task parallel library class library I have used here. And I will first demonstrating a simple clock function, which is just a simple implementation of a threading concept wherein I'm just doing a thread or sleep and it is giving me a clock. So I'll just run this. So if you see here, we are seeing a simple clock. Now, similarly using the TPL, you can accomplish various actions by performing similar kind of uh, it operations in method that can return a task. So let's move on to the TPL implementation. Um, we have three different methods. Uh, one is to get the data. The next method does is parsing of the data. And the third method is the save of data. If you see here in the method which calls these, um, the, the get, met, get data method gets the value, the string value, and it returns a particular task result. The task result is then passed on to the next method, which is to save the data along with another input, and which again returns you a task result, which is again on completion of that is passed to the past data now pass data again gets an input and the task result is obtained from the third method execution passing it again to another method and getting the final result so this is how we uh, do the tpl and there are other extension methods but notice that the for each task we are adding what is called a continuation um, that is the continue with the continuation here is a new task and is started automatically by the TPL when the antecedent or the previous task completes. So when we define the chain of action upfront and the TPL monitors and coordinates when to invoke each action. Now, since we are performing all this expensive and latent operation like asynchronously uh, with a task, each of these tasks can take uh, as long as it needs without affecting the real time updates. So let me just run this. So if you see here, we are getting all the tasks accomplished here, flows through all the tasks and it gives the result. So to understand more advanced capabilities of TPL, we can perform a continuation conditionally depending on if the task has failed or canceled or completed successfully. And for that we can do by providing a selection of task continuation options to the continue method which I just showed you. Now TPL in also enables consistent cancellation, uh, what's called a cancellation token throughout its APIs and progress reporting is possible uh, where we use an interface called iProgress of T uh, which was introduced long back in version 4.5 itself. 
Um, you can also create your own implementation of the task scheduler class and customize how the tasks are queued into threads. Now there are certain caveats and uh, uh, there are certain scenarios in exception handling. An exception that happens in the task code does not interrupt execution of your code. So you can't just use try catch from the caller as we use in a normal scenario. In order to get the task result, you typically need to set a callback. That is a method that we set and is called when the task completes as I showed you previously in the demo. It can be a bit hard to read since the callback is indented and you saw that we, um, the lambda expression and marked with the additional braces and parentheses. And that will be all for today. Uh, do like the video and subscribe to the channel 5 Minute Tech and wish you a fantastic day ahead. Have a nice one. Thank you.